In a previous video, I went over how to do a basic SEM alignment. In this video, I want to get into the details behind astigmatism, how to notice it, how to fix it, and what some of the physical mechanisms are that underpin it. So here we see a, a blurry image, and I've induced astigmatism. I can show that by focusing to the left, where I can induce a diagonal stretch in this case, and that's showing me I have astigmatism. I can prove that by going to the right of focus, focusing towards the right here, and now I've gotten that stretch to rotate 90 degrees. It's now stretching along this axis. And so when we see this astigmatism, as I said in the previous video, what we always want to do is try to bring focus somewhere in between where we have equal blurriness along all edges of our particle or our feature. And we can see that what I like to refer to it as a, as a inflection point. So as I go to the right, I can see stretching along one axis. To the left, I can get it to flip. And so I want to be at the inflection point somewhere in between where it's just equally blurry along all edges. Once you're at focus there, we would use astigmatism, shift right click to go left and right, up and down until we got a sharper image. So I, I want to understand, want you to understand how that works and why that works. Um, so here, when we see our image is blurry, I'm saying we're at focus and we're at five millimeters working distance. If I bring the focus to the left and I induce that diagonal stretch, now I'm at 4.9 millimeters working distance. If we look at our diagrams, we're in this situation here. So we've now bring, brought the focal plane above the sample surface. It was at five, and now we're sitting at 4.9 above. So at focus, we, that's where the beam is at its smallest, and it's always circular. But below focus, if we have astigmatism, then the cross-section of that beam is going to be elliptical. Now, to understand why we get a diagonally stretched image, if we were to step that elliptically shaped beam on every pixel in our image, when we have a 2D image put together, we can see that the ellipses align, and in this case, we'll be able to pull signal from along this diagonal. What I mean is, if we look at this pixel in the center, it's pulling signal from this pixel, but it's also pulling information from the pixel to the top right and bottom left. And in doing so, if we have an edge, as we have on this particle, it's going to make that edge look extra sharp. And if we go back to our, our image here, we can see that that's what I have. I have along edges of the particle, I have they look very sharp. Now if I move the focus to the right, and what I'm saying is the other side of the focal plane, now I'm at 5.1 millimeters working distance. If we go back to our diagrams, we're in this other situation here. So now I'm under focused, my focal plane is beneath the plane of the sample, so I'm contacting it with a, an ellipse above the focal plane, and now that ellipse is rotated 90 degrees with respect to the uh, bottom side of the focal plane. So if we take this elliptical shape and step it along our 2D image, now we're pulling signal from not only the pixel that it's contacting, but the pixel to the top left and bottom right. And so along this edge, of this particle, that's going to be sharp, and you can see that's rotated 90 degrees from, for instance, this edge. So we can go in, into our SCM image, and we can see that now that we have sharpness along that edge. So I want to go in between the two stretching sides, where we have equal blurriness along the edge of our particle. And if we go to our diagrams, we can see that now I'm in this situation here. So at focus, we always have a circle, whether we have an ellipse above and below, uh, it's always going to be a circle at focus. If we have astigmatism and we have that ellipse above and below, it just means that our circle at focus is going to be artificially large. And if we take that large circle and we step it along our 2D array, it's going to be pulling information from its own pixel and all adjacent pixels equally and that's going to induce a blurry image. So we can see that here, our image is, is very blurry, but equally blurry along all edges. So when we now go shift right click and we try to fix the astigmatism, left and right for X, up and down for Y, and we can see 
on getting back to a reasonable, reasonably sharp image, what we're doing is by by adjusting the uh, astigmatism, we're, we're pushing the shape of the beam from an ellipse into a circle above and below the focal plane, and that makes us have a smaller circle at the focal plane. So now if we step that, that small circle on each pixel, we're only pulling information from that pixel, and we're gonna get a nice sharp image. So that's uh, a uh, description of how we're getting all these different images. Um, and it's just a matter of iterating that process where we want to find focus and then use our astigmatism corrections to sharpen up the image. Now, I want to show quickly what happens if we don't pick the right focal plane. So, for instance, I'm at pretty good focus and astigmatism here. Now, if I move my focus uh, to the right, for instance, and now I'm trying to fix astigmatism, I'm going to move the focus a little more. If I try to fix astigmatism when I'm not on the right focal plane, all I'm really doing is I'm changing the shape of the ellipse that's contacting the surface. So as I move left and right, you can see I'm inducing a stretching. If I move up and down, I'm just changing the way that that's stretched. So this means that while I'm fixing astigmatism, if I notice that the image is, is stretching, then that's my visual cue that tells me I'm not on the right focal plane. I'm not contacting the surface with a circle. I'm contacting it with an ellipse, and I'm just changing the shape of that ellipse. So as soon as I see that, I want to go back to focus. I can go to the other side of focus, and I can get the, that stretching to rotate 90 degrees. I'm going to find what I refer to as an inflection point in between, where we have equal blurriness on all edges. This is focus. Now I'm going to adjust the X and the Y astigmatism, and you can see as I'm doing this, I don't see any stretching while I'm adjusting astigmatism, which tells me that I'm definitely on the right focal plane. And I can iterate that process as much as possible, or as many times as I need to. I can zoom in, I can use a reduced window, I can look at smaller particles, and again, focus left and right, look for stretching, stop in the middle, and fix the astigmatism. Okay, so that's a more detailed description of where astigmatism comes from, why we see it, how to fix it, and what visual cues we can look for as we're doing that. In another video, I'll show uh, how to fix astigmatism on features that are not necessarily circles. We can do it on right angles, too. And I'll show in another video how to uh, fix astigmatism using something called the stigmata alignment.